spoke of, we will again focus on calculations that arise when a weak acid is titrated with a strong base. For example, pre-equilibrium calculations, the 5% rule, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, various pH calculations, and other concepts as different amounts of a strong base are added to a weak acid. So let's begin with a simple titration where given amounts of a strong base, sodium hydroxide, are added to a weak acid, acetic acid, and we are asked to calculate the final pH after each addition. It may help to first diagram the problem to assure you know what is given and what is being asked. So let's calculate the pH before any base is added. The first step is to write out the acid equilibrium, and it's a good idea to always write the Ka over the equilibrium arrows. It is worth mentioning that the small Ka value indicates the acid does not want to associate. In other words, the equilibrium will lie to the left because the conjugate base is unstable or high in energy and therefore reactive, or one could simply say it is a strong conjugate base. Thus, acetic acid is a weak acid. Remember that understanding acid strength is simply examining the stability of the conjugate base. So now let's also include the initial concentration of acid at T0 and the change in concentrations when at equilibrium. Now we can substitute the equilibrium concentrations into the expression for Ka. The denominator can be simplified employing the 5% rule, which was discussed in detail in part 1, to afford a much easier calculation. X, the proton concentration, is now easily calculated, followed by a pH calculation. Note the log sig fig rule. When taking the log of a number with three sig figs, one must report three sig figs after the decimal point. Now let's calculate the final pH of the solution after 12.65 milliliters of sodium hydroxide is added. The hydroxide ion is written as a reactant here because it will combine with the most acidic proton in solution, the exchangeable proton of acetic acid, to afford the neutralization product water and acetate. Now let's write down quantities of acid and base given directly under the species, so we can stay organized. Then convert given quantities to millimoles. The millimoles of hydroxide will react completely with the millimoles of weak acid, to afford 17.49 millimole acetic acid and 3.772 millimole of conjugate base per 62.65 milliliter total volume, which are now easily converted back to molarity. At this point, our pre-equilibrium calculations are complete, and we are now ready to look at our equilibrium concentrations after indicating expected change. Our expected equilibrium concentrations are placed in the expression for Ka, the denominator and numerator are simplified due to the 5% rule. The concentration of protons is calculated, followed by the pH calculation. Alternatively, one could use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve for the final pH. After all, the Ka, the initial concentration of conjugate base, and the initial concentration of acid are all known. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation also gives the resulting pH of 4.078. A quicker way to solve using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is to stop at the step in the pre-equilibrium calculation, which affords millimoles of reactants and products initially present, which is afforded after the stoichiometric calculation. Dividing millimoles by the total volume of the solution and then placing those concentration ratios into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we see that we can cancel out milliliters within both denominators and quickly calculate the final pH. This shortcut demonstrates that we can simply plug quantities of millimoles calculated in the pre-equilibrium step directly into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to even more quickly calculate the final pH as shown. So now let's calculate the pH after 35.65 milliliters of strong base are added to our aliquot of weak acid. Again, the hydroxide ion is written as a reactant here because it will combine with the most acidic proton in solution, which is the exchangeable proton of acetic acid, to afford the neutralization product water and acetate. Now let's write down quantities of acid and base given directly under the species so we can stay organized, then convert given quantities to millimoles. The 10.63 millimole of hydroxide will react completely with the 21.26 millimole of weak acid to afford 10.63 millimole acetic acid 
and 10.63 millimole of conjugate base. At this point, you should immediately realize that you are halfway to the equivalence point, which is significant because millimoles conjugate base will cancel with millimoles weak acid within the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and therefore the pH is equal to the pKa as we have demonstrated earlier in this review. However, if you unfortunately did not recall that the pH is equal to the pKa, then one could convert millimoles to molarity utilizing the new total volume to complete the pre-equilibrium calculation. Now we can write the expected change or our expected equilibrium concentrations, then place them into the expression for Ka. The denominator and numerator is simplified due to the 5% rule. The concentration of protons is calculated, followed by the pH calculation, which is a lot more work. Alternatively, one could use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve for the final pH. After all, the Ka, the initial concentration of conjugate base, and the initial concentration of acid are all known. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation also gives the resulting pH of 4.745, but again, this is a lot more work. Clearly, this is a much easier problem when one recognizes that the pH is equal to the pKa of the weak acid when halfway to the equivalence point. Or another way of stating this is when millimoles acid equal millimoles conjugate base. To calculate how many milliliters are required to neutralize an aliquot of weak acid of known molarity, it is usually helpful to first write down given quantities of acid and base directly under each species so that we can stay organized. At the equivalence point, millimoles of acid will equal millimoles of base. Thus, we first convert given quantities of weak acid to millimoles, which is how many millimoles of base are required for the neutralization. Rearranging the molarity expression allows us to calculate the milliliters of base required to complete the titration. To answer the question, what is the pH at the equivalence point, we realize there are 21.26 millimole of conjugate base per volume total, which affords a molarity of 0.1753 molar. At this point, the only species in solution is the unstable reactive conjugate base, acetate, and it will do what it can to stabilize, which means reacting with water to convert back to acetic acid, and in the process generate an increase in hydroxide concentration. So let's indicate the new equilibrium between acetate and water to afford acetic acid and hydroxide, which will require a Kb for the new equilibrium. The Ka for acetic acid is easily converted to a Kb for acetate. And again, it is a good idea to write the equilibrium constant over the equilibrium arrows. With our pre-equilibrium calculations completed, we can now focus on our equilibrium calculation, which will include the change in concentrations when in equilibrium. Our expected equilibrium concentrations are placed in the expression for Kb. The denominator is simplified due to the 5% rule. The concentration of hydroxide anion is calculated, followed by a pOH calculation, which is then converted to a pH. Alternatively, once the hydroxide concentration is calculated, it can easily be converted to a proton concentration, followed by a pH calculation. At this point, Please take a moment and look over how all the sig fig rules within these calculations were followed. As an exercise to further review and reinforce this material, it is suggested that the student do the final pH calculations when various amounts of potassium hydroxide are added to the weak acid propanoic acid. The answers are given here with correct significant figures. So now let's complete our review by examining an exercise where we calculate the Ka of a weak acid employing some of the concepts we have learned. As with all exercises, I like to diagram out the information given and asked within the problem. So here we have 1.814 millimoles of a solid monoprotic acid. It's dissolved in 50 milliliters of water and it's titrated with 18.32 milliliters of this previously standardized sodium hydroxide solution, which is 0.0495 molar. The pH was then determined to be 
and it looks like here we're tasked with determining the Ka of this novel monoprotic antibiotic. In this titration, a strong base is being added to an acid, which we will represent as HA. First, let's write down quantities given and added and calculate millimoles of base added. At this point, we should recognize that it is half the value of millimoles HA, which means we are halfway to the equivalence point in the titration. Recall that pH is equal to the pKa at halfway to the equivalence point. Thus, the pH of 5.87 is equal to the negative log of the Ka. Solving for the Ka affords the value of 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6, which indicates this is a weak acid. But what if you did not recognize that you were halfway to the equivalence point after you calculated millimoles of base added? Well, it's going to be a lot more work. So, the 0.907 millimoles of hydroxide will react completely with the 1.814 millimoles of acid to afford 0.907 millimoles acid and 0.907 millimoles of conjugate base. Then one could convert millimoles to molarity utilizing the new total volume to complete the pre-equilibrium calculation. Now we can write the expected change or our expected equilibrium concentrations then place them into the expression for Ka and the denominator and numerator are simplified due to the 5% rule. Now that simplification assumes this will be a weak acid. Okay, so obviously we cannot solve for x here because we do not know the Ka value. However, we do know that x is equal to the proton concentration and we can calculate the proton concentration from the given pH within the word problem, which is equal to the negative log of the proton concentration. Solving for the proton concentration yields 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6. Remember, the proton concentration is equal to x in our Ka expression. Thus, we can go back and substitute this value in for x and simply solve for Ka as shown. Alternatively, we could employ the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve for Ka. After all, we have the pH, the conjugate base concentration, and the acid concentration which allows one to calculate the Ka as shown. While we have demonstrated three different ways to calculate the Ka value, the first way was clearly the easiest, but it relied on us to first recognize that we were halfway to the equivalence point.